She's a mom, she's a wife, she also works for the United States Attorney's Office. But now, Laquita Bryan Jenkins is passionate about the future of education for Charleston County students. In this edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I sit down with Ms. Jenkins one-on-one. -on -one. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Oh, Ms. Jenkins. Yes. It is so Thank good you. to see you. Nice to see you too. Always. Yes. Yes. Right, we see each other a lot downtown here. We do, we yeah. do. Up and down Charleston Street. Yes, right. That's right. <laughs> and you know, I was doing my research on you. Okay. I had no oh, clue. Right. This is, I mean, a tremendous career that you have. Oh, wow. United States Attorney's Office, Master of Science in Administration of Criminal Justice from Sam Houston State University. Yes. President of North Central Neighborhood Association 2016 to right now. Yes. PTA and Title I board member. Yes. Friends of Jane Center board <laughs> member. Quality Education Project member. Gosh, you're busy. Busy. Who else is Laquita Brian Jenkins these days? <laughs> Good question. I am a wife and mother of two beautiful little yes. girls. One attends Beast Academy and one attends James Simmons, first grader and a third grader. And that is always at the top of the list. Sure. And it's um, always followed by all the other things you just read. But yes, that's who I am. I'm a deaconess at Royal right. Baptist yeah. Church. My husband's a deacon there. Uh -huh. Yes, and um, and I'm just a community uh, activist. That's really one of my strong suit and my passion is just to help my community be a better community. Mm. You talk about that. Um, I know that you asked. You were asked a question by CharlestonChamber.net when you were running for our office for Charleston County School Board District 20 Constituent Board. Mm -hmm. And they asked you this, what do you see as top issues within your constituent district? You said the following quote, funding is the top issue within my constituent district. Mismanagement of funds is unacceptable. We must be physically responsible when our children's futures are at stake. There is no room for error when we are projecting and preparing for our children's futures. A quality education should be seen as a necessity, not a public good. Our goals should be more measurable and ramifications in place if goals are not met, our Title I schools are currently underfunded, and I will ensure that the funds are being distributed based on needs and not equally distributed. Each school has distinctive needs, and we need to be in a position to meet those needs financially. Our district should require schools to perform at a level of excellence, and if teachers and administrators don't perform, they should be removed. Tell me, today is February 19, 2018. Mm -hmm. What are the top issues of facing District 20 right now in your mind? It's still budget. It's still um, dealing with proper funding for our schools. We just met at the constituent school board member and a report was given by Mr. Wilson, Kim Wilson from mm -hmm. the district. And if we don't get it together in District 20, we will be operating still um, under budget. We uh, will have I think he said like millions or billions of dollars where we really just don't have enough money. Bottom line, we just don't have enough money in the educational budget to fund the things that need to be funded. Now, I feel like there are some things that are fluffed. We can do some training back, maybe at 75 Calhoun, okay. uh, to, cut, to put some money back into our budget. Um, but then we'll talk about that at a later date in more detail, but I also feel that our Title I schools are still underfunded. We don't have uh, the resources to uh, take care of the needs of the children at our Title I schools. We're still dealing with diversity issues. Uh, professional development is an area that needs to be tapped into with our educators. Um, more uh, diversity training, uh, understanding our scholars that are from certain from certain racial backgrounds, sure. cultural right. issues, things like that. Um, so we do need to deal with that. Um, the, going back to the money, okay. uh, Mr. Wilson also talked about the Act 388, right. where we need to definitely deal with this shortfall sooner rather than later. And I know we talk about, we don't like to hear about tax increases okay. on our property, but um, it's time for a tax increase if we plan on funding our schools properly. How did we get here? How did we get here? Mismanagement and the shortfall and... 
You know, I often sit at home when I have a moment of quiet time, yeah. which is rare. Yeah, I know. Uh, but when you look in the faces of your children, any parent who has a child, and you draw from your own uh, upbringing. I, you know, was raised by a single parent, mm -hmm. went to public school, and it was tough and it was tight. Um, but I had a mom who didn't play. Now, my father wasn't in the home, but he wasn't absent from my life. And so having parents who didn't play, who, was, uh, who knew that a quality education was what I needed to do better than they were doing or they had done, then they uh, knew that um, increasing taxes wasn't a problem for them. So we got here because somebody took their eye off the ball. We got here because I think from what I've learned and what I've seen, I'm not going to go what I think, what I have ex experienced through working through PTA, right. Friends of James right. Sands, being in the trenches, sure. getting an understanding of how this all works. We have people in the system who are not advocating for our scholars. We have, we have people in, who hold certain board positions who have other interests in mind, and it's not the future of our scholars. So we need to get those people out, and you know, you might want to say, well, how do we get those people out? You have to be a parent or a guardian that is active. Be, it, be at the PTA meetings, have your ear to the street, mm -hmm. be in your community, get to know the people in your community, talk to the principals, talk to the teachers, not just your child's teachers, but to the parent advocates, to the counselors at the school. That's how I gained my understanding of how District 20 worked, mm -hmm. was getting out there, getting to know, talking to the people, trying to figure out what's going on. How did, how did this all happen? When we were 18 million a couple of years ago in the district, we had uh, mismanagement. Right. And then we hired a company to come in and we paid them close to, what, I think $800,000 to do the books again. To re That's money out, the, out of the budget. We, we can't afford that. We have to keep our eye on the ball. Just like you manage your pennies daily, you have to manage the pennies of the taxpayers just the same, with the same being meticulous, getting out in the schools, talking to the administrators, talking to all the stakeholders and seeing what are we doing that we shouldn't be doing or what is duplicity or what can we do to, be, to do better by our scholars. So we drop the ball. And I always say we because anyone who has birthed a child who has a child in the school system, you're included in, the, okay. in this. You, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's all of us. We can't sit on the sideline anymore. We have to get in the ring. I, got, I have two questions. How do you get those people out if the voters voted them in? The ones who don't want them in need to come out to get them out. We need to come together. We need to have conversations. We need to get out and vote to get them removed. We need to show up to the school board meetings and not just spew negative comments, but also address the issues but have a resolve okay. or make a suggestion that's been well thought out and plan so that we can see, okay, maybe we can, we can implement this. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you know, we want to come out and we want to, we're angry when we come out. Mm -hmm. And my husband always taught me, when you get stopped by the police on the street, that's not the time to argue about the ticket. The courtroom is where the arguments take place. So a lot of times I feel like we argue in front of the media camera about things, but we don't have the resolve. And that's, to me, not always the platform. Now, the media has its purpose and its platform for getting information out. But then the strategic planning is done at the table. But well, who's at the table? And oftentimes, our people who these, this type of lack of funding or lack of planning affect, those people are not at the table. Where are they? <laughs> you know, <laughs> our parents, you know, well, you know, our parents are around, and I know I work a lot with the parent advocate at James right. Simmons, and, and it's certain parents can't always come because some parents have to work right. two and three jobs. Sure. So 
And if you know, if you want to get into the makeup or, 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 or of those parents, we can. But a lot of parents that are moving into the into the city, right? Okay, don't look like us. We're we're leaving. Okay, some of us are leaving, and a lot of Caucasians are coming in. And so, with the dynamics of that changing, a lot of the parents that I encounter are not necessarily financially able to always attend a five o'clock meeting when they're at work. Okay, so uh, I work a lot with the groups that I work with, be it PTA or Friends of Jane Simmons, and I'm always pushing having meetings gatherings at times that are after 5 36 in the evening now granted that's late some people say that's dinner time but at what time so we ought to have things in the late evening for those parents who work between the eight o'clock five o'clock window sure. and then we have things before eight o'clock when you have to drop your kids off at school so we can meet you at 7 15 7 30. Mm -hmm. so we have to push being flexible those that can and once we meet, we have to push getting it out, getting the information out to the masses, those that couldn't make it, the ones that can't be at the table. Sure. We have to make it our point to get the information out to them. So, um, and, and, and allowing people to be involved, too. A lot of times we, you run into low-income families who don't feel that they have a voice because they might not be able to articulate what it is, their thoughts, about specific things going on within the school, about the district, about the budget, um, be it their, um, um, you could, it could be lack of education, mm -hmm. lack of just, you know, articulation, can't formulate how they want right. to get, and I get that, and that's okay. But I, I tell people, come as you are, mm -hmm. because there's someone at the table that can take what you're saying and say, hey, is this what you're saying, and then articulate it and present it to the group in a way that it is impactful, meaningful, and understandable. Mm -hmm. So I and so I find myself speaking for those families that say, you know, I want to say this, but I'm not comfortable saying this. I said, well, let's have a conversation. You tell me what you want to say. And then I find a way to get it worked into the meeting, into the conversation at the table so that all needs can be addressed. What type of conversation would you have with the Charleston County School Board members and Dr. Postway right now? Right now, the conversation would be uh, inclusion. The conversation would be affording the abuse education, abuse academy on Calhoun education to all of our District 20 schools. Why is it that we have this one school with this great blue ribbon recognition and rigorous curriculum, but all of our other schools are failing within the district? That would be my conversation. Mm. And I know that when you spoke with the Charleston Chamber Dr. Neff with this questionnaire, they asked you, when asked why you want to be a constituent school board member, you said this quote, I want to be a member of the constituent school board because of my commitment to a quality education for all children. I am married and have two children in district training, and I want to ensure that we build and improve the educational environment for all children to obtain their goals and level of success. I'm committed to doing my part to facilitate, nurture, and grow relationships that will allow for quality teachers to be higher, scrutinized, and also scrutinize the discipline, you know, discipline, <laughs> disciplinary <laughs> issues. <laughs> I screwed that up. <laughs> no problem at all. But by ensuring any and necessary steps were taken prior to expelling students from schools, it is important to my family to give back and get, get involved with the next generation by affording all children every opportunity to be successful. Lastly, I will work to ensure we are using the best practices in the classroom and advocate for our students' educational needs by working with the students, parent advocates, administrators, and teachers. Tell me this, who is Laquita Bryant Jenkins on the District 20 School Board right now? I am the vice chair, was just voted right. last month as a vice chair. I um, got elected in 2016, November 2016. Right. And right now I am s sitting there and I am working for our scholars. And we have had less expulsions. Uh, we are a majority on the board, African American majority. Right. And because the majority of the students that come before us are African American, we can pull from our childhood experiences, we can pull from being young people ourselves, right. and we can say, you know, 
we've made mistakes as well. And if not given another chance, if someone doesn't say, you know, you're 14, we understand you had a fight, and we understand, you know, you get into these girl quarrels or boy quarrels. But you know what? When they're at, when their grades say otherwise, we know they possess the skills that they need to stay in school. Is they just need to refocus. Mm -hmm. So expelling them sometimes is not an option. Allowing them another chance is a great option. So keeping them in school versus expelling them and allowing them the opportunity to get in trouble on the street, we choose to keep them in school. So we've been voting uh, to keep our kids who are demonstrating uh, strong academic scores, okay. might have had some infraction, but it didn't warrant being expelled. We redrew the district lines to include the lines from Mount Pleasant Street all the way up to around Shakura area. So those children and families that are in that, they saw industrial right. the neck, oh, yeah. can have a choice, some flexibility. We've also moved the line to where the children on this side of King Street, right. over on the side of Mount Pleasant Street, can right. go to James Simmons, which is directly across the street from their home. So we've lessened the expulsion rate. We've increased the line to be more inclusive of children. And right now, Laquita is working to hopefully gain more responsibility from the big board, mm -hmm. be included in the hiring, or just at the table at least to see what is coming before the district. That's something that we are working on. And I don't say me because it's a it's a group. We are a group. We all have we all have our individual differences. Sure. But at the same time, we collectively have to work as a board and make these important decisions for our scholars. And on that board is Tony Lewis, who's the new chairman of District Twenty Constituent yes, Board. Sir. When you think of Tony, what sticks out to you? Wow, that voice. <laughs> that you know, his his voice and his passion right. for our scholars. You know, and granted, Tony has a number of other challenges and things that he's facing, and we all read them in uh, the Chronicle, the Post and Courier, on the net, whatever. Um, we, you can't take away his love for our children. Okay. And as a school board member, that's what you're on there for, to serve our children, our teachers, and our families. That's what you're on there for. And I say children first. Mm -hmm. We need, they are our focus. They are your future, and they're my future. So that's very important. So yes, Tony Lewis um, is a person that I can genuinely say is passion, passionate right. about the future of our children, not just brown children, right. but all children. And, and you need that, and I say that, and I want that to stand out, because everybody who served doesn't always have that heart. And what do you think of the future of Charleston County School District, the Charleston County School District, that is, what plays in your mind? Wow, what plays in my mind when I think about the Charleston County School District? We had a long way to go. And I and I I pray that I believe it'll turn around. Okay. With me working with a group of passionate people, people that are empathetic as well, and who understands the importance of a quality education, I truly believe our future for District 20 will be strong and we will be empowered and we will always have at the forefront of our mind our students, all students. The, you know, it's changing. Our environment is changing. Our areas are changing and we get that. That still doesn't take away us doing all that we can in our district for our children. Mm -hmm. we, we, we must do that. That's important to me. That's so important to me. When I walk out of my home in the morning and I see children walking alone, we include them in our family walk. Because wow. there's no reason not to. And I don't care what color you are. Right. You're a child. And for some reason, you're walking to school by yourself. Come with us. My husband and I, we can walk, we can walk one to school and get in the car and drive. We're blessed like that. Unapologetically, I say we, my family, is so favored, and we are so grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have enough to give. So um, that's just important to me, is to see our children walking to school, being safe, being right. safe in our schools, right. 
given this recent tragedy in the high school, it's important that our kids feel safe walking to school when they're in school and when they leave school. Laquita Bryan Jenkins, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Washington. I truly appreciate it. And it's an honor to be on your show. Oh, thank you greatly. I appreciate it. Right. And I'll see you downtown. Yes, you will. <laughs>